Well, good day, everybody. We're here in Port Dalhousie. Good day, everybody. We are here in Port Dalhousie. You can see the water behind me. There's a carousel back there if you want to go take a nickel carousel ride. And there's beer across the street. So let's go over there. Great, let's go inside and get some beer. After you, young sir. I wasn't even trying to be a filmer. Hi, I'm uh, Sarah from Lock Street Brewing. I'm the head brewer here. We are one of Niagara's newest craft breweries nestled in the historic village of Port Dalhousie. Uh, I'd love to show you guys around. We'll leave Casey, one of our servers, to man the bar. And I'll take you back to the kitchen area. So, uh, this is my kitchen, what we like to refer to it as. Uh, we have three 18 hectoliter fermenters and one brain tank. Right now, over here, we have our uh, little mash tun, uh, water tun combo, and a, our kettle right here. So this is kind of where we uh, the magic happens and where uh, we're releasing a new beer kind of every month, rotating taps. Um, Right now we have uh, six different recipes on the go. Um, hopefully we'll be up to eight consistent taps uh, by the summertime. Out in the back here, it's uh, not developed yet, but we're hoping to eventually have a whole patio area for the summertime for people to enjoy the sunshine uh, kind of on a hot afternoon. Uh, being a startup and kind of opening um, just a couple months ago, we're still working a lot on uh, uh, our facility and on uh, where we want to go with uh, the building. So, yeah, this is uh, kind of where we want people to take it in and get the aesthetic of the place and where we brew. So over here, we do our bottling and our canning, but uh, we utilize the space the best we can. Uh, and here's where we keep our cakes cooler right now it's pretty full it's been uh, some slower summer or slower winter months but we're hoping to pick it up in the next little while here want to follow me upstairs like the old lion uh, sign mm -hmm. so this is our main um, tasting room area where um, Hopefully we'll get you know some some crowds and nestle people in here. We have our uh, product in the fridge. Our light's currently out, so you can't see it too well. But uh, we're hoping to have a whole array of uh, bottles and cans ready for the summertime. To our lounge area. Uh, right now, this is a little bit underutilized, but come summertime, I think it's going to be pretty packed. We have uh, a balcony that'll be ready to go for the summertime. If you look out on the lake, the old lighthouse, the carousel. Um, right now, as you can see, we started a little bit with our artist series. So these are all local artists who want to show their work and hopefully eventually sell if people are interested. Otherwise, it's just a great kind of add to the aesthetic of uh, the Heritage Building and our um, motto of kind of keeping things local and artisan. So we've got about three, four pieces on the wall right now, but hopefully eventually it'll be all filled. We might even do furniture, art furniture that people can buy and uh, just help out the local community here. Um, we're hoping that uh, eventually with the uh, growth of this space that uh, Port Dalhousie will be lively again and uh, 
you know, start bringing in more tourism uh, just to show the the beautiful community here and what it can be. I think it's, it has a lot of potential. And we're really excited for uh, where it could go. So, um, yeah, feel free to kind of look at our hand burned barrels here as well. This is my own personal art, actually. <laughs> Lots of fun. So yeah, it's a work in progress, but we're we're excited for it. We can't wait for uh, the girl. All right, so get to know Sarah a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, how did you get into the, how did you get into the industry? Uh, well, it's been a few years now. Um, I'm actually pretty pretty new to it, but I've done several apprenticeships and um, never actually went to school for it. I learned uh, the old-fashioned way of brewing, um, but I was lucky to kind of be in the right place, right time, and find myself here at Lock Street, where I've continued to learn a lot. Um, yeah. I guess, where, where should you go next? You can, ah, uh, you know what? I'm glad that you can edit. You know, my train of thought is gone after I drank the first sip of this. <laughs> it's that good. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about the industry? Hmm. I love that it's uh, social. You meet a lot of people on a daily basis and uh, meet a lot of new brewers and a lot of new breweries. Um, in general, and I just I love the social aspect of it, and that it's always moving, and you're always learning. And your least favorite part of the industry? The long days. <laughs> but uh, I, there's nothing that I, I really dislike about it. Actually, I love every aspect of it. But uh, there's definitely times where you get a little bit tired, you just want to go to bed. Malt maniac, hophead, or yeast beast? I don't even know what that means. What's your, what are you, are you a hop head, a malt maniac, oh. or a yeast beast? Malt maniac, is that what you called it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge hop head, definitely not. Something I'm glad to hear. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> hop head, hop head. I know, IPAs, that's like what everyone's all about, but uh, yeah, more mid-range. Uh, favorite style of beer? Uh, ale, really any, any type of ale. But uh, I'm really loving the stout right now. Right, kind of yeah. going in and out of my favorites. But. Least favorite style? Lager. Not a fan of lagers at all. I know it's kind of the mainstream thing on the. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Just not a lager fan at all. <laughs> uh, three beers for the rest of your life. One from here, one from another craft brewery, and one from a big guy. Hmm. Okay. Our uh, Carousel Red Ale from here. Um, what am I liking right now? Um, oh, it's so hard to choose another craft brewery. Silversmith makes some uh, really good beers, so probably something from there. And uh, what's really, really Canadian on the on the grand scale? Is there anything still Canadian owned? Moosehead, probably the biggest just Canadian owned guys. Let's say Steam Whistle because they're completely Canadian and they do have actually a pretty good lager. Even though I don't like lagers that much, they have a good one. And they have their pseudo secrets, the secret Steam Whistle Plus. Oh. You gotta go to the brewery, you have to twist their arm and give you unfiltered Steam Whistle. Oh, we were just there actually. Our whole, our whole staff went and uh, did a trip there. The unfiltered was very good. They should sell it on the market. They should. It they should, should be everywhere. Yeah. Oh, well, we're only gonna make one beer. I <laughs> know. Well, that's the idea. So well, it's, really... it's the same beer. It's, it's just unfiltered. Exactly. Just right now. All of our beers are actually unfiltered. I used to argue with them that, that they should add some more water to the exact same recipe and make a light, take some water away, make an imperial if they really want to make sure. it easy. But yeah. uh, weirdest ingredient you've ever used to brew with? I recently just used honey and uh, the characteristics in the beer are uh, not what I expected, I guess. I was expecting more of like a bit of a sweeter flavor, more of a honey flavor, but it's uh, actually kind of added a little bit of tartness, I would say. But it's nice, but it's uh, so far that's the weirdest ingredient. Alrighty, uh, if you weren't doing this, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, well, I'm actually a professional hockey player as well, so I'd probably just be playing hockey. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, any, any, 
advice for anyone that wants to get into the industry? Uh, yeah, just practice, research, do a ton of reading. Like, there's endless learning out there. Um, but yeah, just just be persistent too. Kind of visit all the craft breweries you can, and uh, go find a spot for yourself. All right. So this was getting to know Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Our carousel red ale and our double. Can we do that again? <laughs> <laughs> We're down here in the retail space with Casey. So first and foremost, what's on tap there? So today we have our winter wheat, our double masted IPA, our carousel red ale, and our starboard stout. Which is an amazing beer. It is an amazing beer. Uh, of these, what do you think sells the best? Um, easily our carousel red ale. It's our fan favorite. Um, I don't like to call our customers customers. They're our fans because um, they're more like family than customers. Alrighty, and um, which one of these four would be your favorite? Oh, that's easy. The stout. That's our staff pick. That's, that's yeah. good to go with. It's awesome. It's good to go with. That's his favorite, too. It is the only one he's had, but it's his favorite. <laughs> it's Damn a perfect right. beer. It's a perfect beer. So, do you notice in uh, in Port Dalhousie, I know that uh, Port Dalhousie, St. Catharines, uh, well, you guys in this area are the third one to open up now, but are you noticing uh, a trend in staying more to the more to the like the blondes and the reds and all that, or do people seem to be a little more experimental here? Um, a lot of people are seeming to be experimental. They usually we suggest a flight. Most people really appreciate that. Um, a lot of people do tend to gravitate towards the red ale. Um, I find it also depends on the age demographic. Um, usually, a lot of our younger customers will come in and they'll specifically ask for the stout, or they'll specifically ask for the double IPA. Um, they just want something a little bit more crazy, a little bit less traditional. Um, whereas a lot of our older clientele do prefer the red ale or the wheat beer because they find it a lot easier to drink. Um, it's just two smooth beers. Uh, well, I was going to bring that up too. I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've been down in Port Dalhousie for anything other than the carousel because now my kids want that. But uh, when I used to come here, it was it was a lot of young people, a lot of bars. Are you finding that you get more of the people venturing over here from the bars, or uh, it's actually a really good mix because um, those the bars around here did close unfortunately a few years ago. But we're uh, we're now that we're here, we're starting to gain notoriety. It's slowly building up. Um, but it's a very, very good mix between older and younger age group. Um, we, as of recently, we've started a, a couple of events recently, so we're actually starting to gain um, a younger clientele, which is very, very nice. Um, but our, it is a very, very mixed clientele. All right, so is there anything special that happens in here during the week? Um, so today, today's Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday we have uh, our open mic. Um, I host it and we, uh, we actually started it last week, this will be our second, our second open mic. Uh, so it's, really yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, thank you. Good job, good job, man. Uh, yeah, it's something that we're just going to be doing moving forward. We're hoping in the future to have more events, more acts, uh, live music, all that kind of stuff. But so what time does the open mic start at? Our, it's a sign up at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, and the music goes from 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, because of our license restrictions right now, that's all we can do. But as we move forward, and we hope to have it a little bit later, and that way we can have more people out and more people can play and experience what it's like to play live. Now we did a little tour with Sarah, and I, I did notice that though she calls that her kitchen back there, there is no kitchen. And I did see some people eating some fine food over here. So where are you getting your food? Uh, so we actually get our food just from Rick's Bistros. It, they're, uh, we're partnered with them. Um, so they actually supply us with all of our food. Um, and they work with us to help us create exactly the kind of menu that we're looking for. Um, they actually use our beer and a fair amount of the food as well. Um, they have sautéed onions and sauerkraut that's actually cooked and soaked in our red ale. Um, the ale chips you got are... got Polish guy back there all drooling now. <laughs> it's an Oktoberfest, the sausage as well, the sauerkraut comes with, so it's phenomenal. Um, we also have ale chips that are soaked in any of our beers, really. They're, it's phenomenal with everything. Uh, and actually interesting, our carrot cake, the icing on it, um, is either a red ale or a stout. <laughs> Whatever they're feeling that day, it's a fresh batch made quite often. So the icing's made with beer? Yes. See, I've soaked with beer a lot, but I've never actually done that. 
It's, uh, it's really interesting what they do. They have to turn it into a reduction, right? So they boil it down, make it almost a syrup. Um, and I personally, I like the chocolate stout in the icing a lot better because it has the coffee notes and it has sweet chocolate notes in it as well. So it actually just completely changes the icing flavor. Alrighty, is there anything else you want to talk about about the retail space or your time here? Um, uh, we know that Sarah chirps you. You can you can make tell that. Tell how complaint. awesome the brewer is. Um, our brewer sucks. <laughs> She's not the best. <laughs> no, our, we have an awesome team. Um, we haven't been open for very long, but being such a tight knit group, we we're, we're like a family already. I think um, this past weekend, our CEO Wolfgang, uh, he actually took us out up to Toronto, uh, paid for everything, and just. He just wanted us to all be working together because we don't, being a startup, we don't have the opportunity to all be working here at the same time. We, If we are working together, it's typically one of us behind the bar will be working while Sarah's here brewing, or Wolfgang is here doing any of his administration, meeting with clients and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it's really nice that he's he wants to create a culture where we can all work together and consider ourselves a family. We're not, it's just not just another place to work. This is this is the place to work. 